Hello everyone, welcome back to Hexen. I have been at con and it's laggy again. Uh, so I'm quite tired and I have a bit of a sore throat, so I'm just going to do one episode today and hopefully it's enjoyable. We will jump through. Uh, at the end of the last episode, of course, I left us about to leave the Seven Portals, see what comes next. I did learn that the Wings of Wrath last for the entirety of the seven portals once you've found them, which is why they're always at the end of the chapter. Having passed the seven portals which sealed this realm, a vast domain of harsh wilderness stretches before you. Fire, ice and steel have tested you, but greater challenges remain ahead. The dense tangle of forest surely hides hostile eyes, but what lies beyond will be worse. Barren desert, dank swamps, and musty caverns bar your way, but you cannot let anything keep you from your fate, even if you might come to wish that it would. And beyond, flickering in the distance, the ever-shifting walls of the hyperstyle seem to mock your every effort. So this is a thing that um, all the odd ones did. They would have, at the end of each chapter, a, a My text like that. Can smell your blood, um, uh, thanks for the, for the information, I suppose. Uh, but, um, in Hexen, I mean, in those games, those games were literally divided into chapters, there were usually three of them, then you finish one chapter and you start the next one, and we're gonna die, so let's move off like this. Um, uh, you start the next one, there's a separate game usually, you can continue, sometimes, you know, with the... Uh, and if you did that, you keep the weaponry that you had at the end of the chapter that you just left, but... Um, in this case, of course, we're just going to continue going. That wall of text, I don't... Honestly, I don't think it's necessary in Hexen here. I don't feel like it really adds very much to the game. Should we pick up this? I'm not sure how much mana it gives us. Uh, yes, we should. Um, because of the fact that it has that sort of introduction to each chapter, it, it seems like having the story in between, it, they could have just put it in the game, but I'm... Honestly, I'm seeing that from a sort of 2016 perspective where we have essentially an infinite amount of resources to play with. The only limiting factor there is usually people's memory and the disk space it takes up, but I mean, who who really notices? Um, a game like Fallout 4 can fit the entirety of the story in however many gigabytes of disk space it takes up and load the assets required to put the, the voice acting into the game without a huge amount of effort. It doesn't really seem like it, it wastes anything. So from a 2016 perspective, of course, uh, that's not friendly. Of course, most of this could have been in the game. Uh, but of course, back then, end of each chapter, there would certainly be uh, a bit of catch up with the story so far type of idea. I might have to pause temporarily and stop this rendering because for some reason this is as laggy as all shit. Uh, let me see if I can please uh, please ignore and forgive the unprofessionalism that is done. That seems better already. I will continue that rendering. It's only an Isaac episode and no one cares. So this opened just because I became close to it. It's another situation where we die without really being given any opportunity to, <laughs> to not do so. The thing about Hexen and all these games that I've been playing recently, which is Hexen, is that they just throw so much crap at you that not dying is almost impossible. But because it's the, the not dying bit, the challenge bit, happens after a sort of semi challenge, which was a pain in the ass. Which all that means is that now I've got this. Burning desire to not die, but the only reason to not die Ooh, that was a bad noise. Is but I don't want to do all that again. Which really encourages save scumming, I suppose, but just run here, that's a good dash. So there's our first portal. Uh, and here's a bunch of things that are currently not doing anything. There we go. Actually making use of these flechettes for once. Honestly, I don't really find that the flechettes on the. I think we're playing the cleric. <coughs> I think we're playing the cleric. I don't feel like the flechettes on the cleric really add that much to the game because they're just too difficult to to use. You know, you can drop them every so often and hope things walk into them. But there's such a 
It's unlikely to hurt you as well. And also, that is ridiculously irritating. I apologise for the 1995 way of handling seven points. But, I don't know, stun locking an enemy is useful in any game, I suppose. But you can see how little damage the actual poison is doing, because we've beaten the crap out of this thing. And it's taken as many as it normally would, if not more. Probably not more, but I'm not prepared to stake my reputation on that. My hard-earned reputation for doing all these YouTube videos. Right. Uh, we will avoid picking up the mana. We'll min-max the mana, basically, is what I'm saying, because it seems like a good idea to do so. And we will also pick up HP. Half expecting to just die randomly and get annoyed and do some more cuts. Please forgive such things if it happens. There's more baddies up here. Yeah, there we go. I really appreciate the ability to look around. I honestly don't think I would have any chance of beating this game on hard if I was still using the, the classic set of controls. And yes, I could be trying to drain these units. I am aware of this. I feel like there's probably a fool's gambit when they keep putting up their shields. Maybe we just sort of pummel them a bit, weaken them up with our mana using weapon and then try and finish them off with our ridiculously underpowered starting weapon here. Honestly, the fact that that didn't hit us at all is slightly odd, but okay. Now you can notice this is another trope of early games, and I think it still holds to these day, to, to this day, is that you slowly gain more and more, um, oh, help. slowly gain more and more weaponry as you go along, and you know when you're about to get one because the ammo types sort of follow the the likelihood of finding those weapons. So I expect somewhere in all of this, eventually, we will find our second mana using weapon. It uses green mana rather than blue. And then in the third chapter, I expect us to find the third piece of our ultimate weapon. It uses both types of God, oh. mana. But I don't actually know what that is for the cleric, because I never played that far, because I found the cleric too difficult a character to play with in the old days. And you can no doubt see why. Had I this modern view of gaming controls, this mouse and keyboard sort of style, you can rest assured that I would have basically done then what I'm doing now, which is try to get through this game on the most outrageously impossible difficulty level. But I didn't. So I've never actually got so far then, as I am about to try to do now. I was just thinking. Is this thing actually going to see me? And I'm also thinking, has the other one turned around it? Okay. Ow, that was very bad. That was, as they say, bad damage. I hate the fact I keep putting this in the doorway and then have to do something else, but I'm, again, don't want to die. I think you can forgive the idea of not wanting to die. We could, um, we could zone. This will, of course, give us an auto save without having to worry about save scoring. We're doing okay. At some point, all this is going to set off, though. That's what worries me. Maybe we leave this for now. I can see that both exits are currently blocked. We'll come back to this, uh, because I don't want to <coughs> die from random traps and then wish that I zoned in order to play with the save mechanism. Now, this area down here, I am fond of, so I'm going to do that in a bit. I'm trying not to take any mana we don't need just yet. Right. We are here. I know this place. This is a bit of a mazy place. Again, remember the engine that they're using was very limited. Everything had to be flat. Careful there. But that didn't stop them putting ground-based traps that come out the floor and try to stab you. So I, <laughs> I guess you know points for points for using your imagination as to how to get around the limitations of this engine. But at the same time, it makes it very difficult. Seems like there's three types of these because some of them are throwing fireballs. I think. I'm not going to worry about mana consumption against these. At least it's not the, I think it's the Bright Crucible, the secret level. At least it's not the Bright Crucible. Please stop aiming at the wrong things. Do not appreciate it. Of course, aim assist. I'm not sure if I can turn it off. Maybe I should check. Um, but it kind of defaulted to on. See that thing coming out the ground there? That will kill you. Irrespective of your uh, HP or armor. So one shot, you're dead. 
This is, I mean, I kind of like it, actually. It seems like a bit of a, a cruel trap, but at the same time, they're fairly obvious on the ground. So you can usually step around them. Checking that I'm not being attacked from behind. Okay, so I can HP out of these things so that we don't have to waste. Well, I will consider a waste of the crystal files around the place. I don't forget we have a map, so we don't actually need to remain lost. Thanks, by the way, to Rorex for pointing out that I was pulling the same switch over and over again in the uh, Guardian of Steel way back when. Ooh, that is full mana for everything, so that's really handy. We will take one because I'm too lazy. Thanks also to Rorex just for watching. <laughs> it's good to have, you know, celebrity on the team. That sounded really sarcastic, and I do apologise. It was not intended to be. Just, just a place. Okie dokie then. I suspect that that will at some point um, open in some manner. Let's use this. Try and beat these things up in the corridors. Again, min-maxing mana is something I really didn't expect I'd have to do. But again, I never played this on hard mode. This is an entirely new experience. I have a better idea of how this level works than I had of the previous level. That being said, I thought I knew what I was doing on the previous level. That being said, on the previous level, I was pulling the wrong switch over and over again, so I did know what I was doing, uh, but I was doing it wrong. These also, note that they seem to go up at different times. Oh, the other one's even going back down again. Also, I thought they went up much faster than that. Interesting. That is definitely buggy. Never mind. Never mind. We will explore these uh, tunnels. Are actually things that I copied when I made my own maps for Hexen and Doom. Because I really like the aesthetic of having these sort of... Again, don't forget, it's just a ceiling. But they've, they've managed to do some really interesting things with it. Having these supports made out of like, verticals and a horizontal across the top. Very clever use of a very limited resource. Wow, okay, I actually ducked in real life just now. Okay. That, put as much mana as I need to into this. Very well. Just can't get in there, can't duck. You can jump, but you can't duck. Uh, I'm kind of glad that they haven't added anything into this game that we couldn't do before, except the looking around, and I basically only had the looking around thing because I just prefer the aesthetic of having a truly 3D environment, even though the, obviously the engine that produces it is entirely 2D. Well, entirely 2D. It's a 2D, sort of a projected 2D. You know what I'm saying, you've been through this before. Um, but being able to look up and down just gives me a little bit more control about where I point the camera. And as I was saying, it still seems like they auto-aim as though it were fully 2D. Can get up there, but I'm not sure how. Probably around there. Ooh, I ducked again. These Afrits waking up in these corridors, I mean to pick that up, these Afrits waking up in these corridors are not helping. But luckily there are only three hits, they may be the weakest enemy in the game. Of course you can't beat them up while they are in their shell. Wrapped up. Uh, yeah, take a full on Afrit hit to the face, I don't mind. That opens. We just have to be careful not to stand in front of them <laughs> and let them shoot us. Just like that, yeah, well done. I really appreciate the new lighting. I want to go down there but without picking up those. Let's go a different way. May have to just fail to min-max the um, green mana for now. Oh, jeez! Deep breath. It's okay. Uh, answers on a postcard, please. Shall I put a cut in here? I think I might do. I'll tell you what, if I feel like I should have, I will put a cut in, but it will sound extremely awkward because I'm going to continue commentating anyway. He says, and then immediately goes silent. See how he's aiming downwards? That's a, a crutch for the old days when, of course, you couldn't look up and down properly. You could look up and down, sort of, but. It would also aim vertically for you, uh, based on the likelihood that you're trying to aim at something that is pointing. Uh, you're pointing at. 
Let's go down here. Try and get some HP from this. That's not hurting me too much. The life drain is not as fast as I was expecting it to be. And this flash out's too useful. They're basically no use in any situation, because if they're in a corridor, you can't get past them. Ooh, two shots, eh? Cheeky, didn't expect that. Um, and if they're out in the open, it's pretty hard to kite things into them. Because they all cluster and go around them. I mean, they go around each other, and as a result, go around your... I really feel like they were trying to find a way of differentiating the flesh X between the three enemies, uh, three characters. Why am I taking so much damage? Without a reason. Uh, and as a result, kind of made them fairly useless. I honestly cannot remember what it looks like for the mage. For the fighter, it's a grenade. It's extremely useful because you can chuck it through a gap and get something. You can imagine how useful that is. See, that one's going down again, so... Looks like those are at least working sometimes. Don't mind using my basic weapon for now. And it will start to get tiresome, no doubt. I also appreciate that they mixed up the keys. Obviously in Doom and also Heretic, I believe. There's red, green and blue key. Obviously you can't get through there. Um, Red, yellow and blue keys. Red, green and blue is just what I... I'll automatically say whenever I'm listening to three colours. Red, yellow, and blue keys. Uh, in, I believe in Heretic. Um, what we do here is we use as much mana as we need to to get out of this st sticky situation. So we got ourselves. Um, the mix up in. The mix up. The, the change up the way they differentiate in Doom. Once you got into the hell type things, they were skull keys instead of key cards. In terms of the engine, they were literally the same. Uh, and they simply just never used two of the same types, both types of the same colour of key, in the same levels. Which, I mean, back then it was much more of an arcadey time, so we didn't really go in for game realism, and it's hard to talk about realism in something as fairly unrealistic as this. I mean, it's not uncommon to talk about realism in a patently unrealistic situation like a fantasy setting. We still talk about real we talk about feasibility, I guess. It's all about suspension of disbelief. Um, there's a lot of willing suspension of disbelief that we oh shit. <laughs> Just used up all my mana trying to get rid of those bastards. There's a lot of willing suspension of disbelief in something like Well basically any fantasy setting, you know, there's no such thing as magic, believe it or not. You know, there's no such thing as these serpents. There's no Mana, mana's not a real thing. Oh god, what have I got myself into? You know, there's no way these creatures could really exist. But we allow for the suspension of disbelief because it's kind of, it's the thing that is presented to you as true. So it is true that these creatures are things that exist. You know, it's true that this universe exists. It's true that this area exists, it's true that these mines exist, and we suspend our disbelief because it's also true that this floor is flat. Even though it ain't. You know, there's no way you would find a cave, uh, a mine system this perfectly flat. And even if you, even if they made it not perfectly flat, there's no way you'd find a ca cave system where it was only horizontal floors. It would go up and down a lot. Oh shit. <laughs> Bad place. There's no way that there would be just random bits of mana floating in the sky and you're supposed to pick them up. You know? But, uh, I guess that's another uh, another violation of disbelief there, because honestly I would not say that that would be a normal thing. Just like I would not expect the depths of hell to be sectioned off in terms of red, green and blue coloured. You've got to be careful there, it will squish you. It will squish you even if you can move, so be careful of that. Holy shit! They can get through! They mostly come out at night, near me. Ah, uh, this is bad. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Fuck. That hurt. Uh, get this out. Use it. Use it! I forgot how to use things. It's cute, by the way. Well, it's unlikely that you would have an inventory of this calibre. 
in real life. See? But we suspend the disbelief of inventories in almost every game. There are some games where inventory management is kind of the crux of the game, especially in survival games like um, Cataclysm or Fallout and things like that, where I like it that these things can actually kill them, by the way. Uh, survival games like Cataclysm or Fallout, your, the weight that you're carrying um, can often have an impact on you. But in those games, the organisation of your pack takes no time. Whereas if you think about a game like Resident Evil, at least the one I played, which is Resident Evil 4, for Resident Evil, if you're going to be Yahtzee, the inventory management there no, probably should not have done what I just did. <laughs> Used up all that mana to really no effect. Um, you had to spend time fitting the things that you picked up into the inventory, but the weight of it was no issue. Why am I talking about inventory? I can't remember. But it just seems to violate in in a in a jarring way <laughs> the idea that hell would be partitioned by keys that happen to be the same color as the keys that partitioned the marine corps that was taken over by a hellmouth in the first place i really need mana to deal with this thing so i guess we do something else for now can we do something else i don't want to be up here oh jeez Guess we go this way. I mean, there's many of these, but at least we don't need mana to beat them. We just, you know, kite them until we're blue in the face. But that suspension of disbelief in is, is much less of a problem in arcade type games, which was essentially the, the assumption of games in the 90s, early 90s, mid 90s. Oh, shit, man. Uh, and. Even up to the late 90s. Nowadays we have a concept of an arcade type game, and even the new Doom is basically described as the arcade style of the old Doom. Because it's just, you know, non-stop beat the crap out of scary enemies type game. Oh, the poor Canator. Poor Calator. Wait, did it die or did it fall off? I don't see the, the memory of that enemy. Oh well. So that I feel like there's a lot less suspension of disbelief in a game like in Hexen, and as a result, its successes. It seems like they learned to not require that suspension of disbelief simply by adding new keys. They don't even really change the way they use them. It's just that the keys that exist, exist in situ. The, the purpose of the key and the existence of the key make sense to some extent, in the situation in which you find the key, or require the key. Man, this is hard as all shit right now. I have to forgive my very halting approach down this corridor. But these bastards, I don't think they fit around that corner. But they can see around that corner in a line of sight sort of way, so I'm being careful. I am very much getting a sore throat. That's what happens when you come back from London. Also, it's very, very warm. Conflu, I guess. Honestly, I don't seem to have picked up any anything you call conflu this time around. Normally, uh, <laughs> it's out. Oh, we're okay. Normally, it's a pretty big thing. You boost of speed. Come back from con sick as a parrot because everybody there has got some form of illness. I seem to have staved it off. I've just got general London malaise, which is the grossness you get from being in a place that's got such dirty air. Which is unfortunate, because it's a great place to be, especially for a weekend or so. And to be honest, I didn't really leave the hotel except for a pizza on the first night. There's, there's no reason to go out of the out of the con area. There's plenty of food knocking around. And the con did lay on food. They had convention rates for food, which was actually pretty decent food. Slightly better than last year. What am I talking? Look, if you want to check it out, go find uh, nineworlds.co.uk. Nine worlds, as in the many worlds hypothesis. There are only nine of them. Uh, yeah, come along next year and say hi. Man, it would be sweet to do like a live, rec live YouTube recording. In the game hall, ooh. 
Run that past, um, run that past entertainments. See what you think. We are overrunning slightly on this episode, but I can't seem to stop fighting things. But what we'll do is we'll beat up these. I'm doing okay with this, don't you think? This, uh, this mace that I've forced myself to use by using up all my actual ammunition. I wonder whether hard mode uses up more ammunition than uh, medium and easy mode. Well, I'm going to cut here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will join me for the next episode.